whether you're filming or you're a videographer, the name of the game is image acquisition. Part of getting nice, beautiful images is nice, steady, slow, controlled movement. One of the ways that you do that is to motorize things. And so I took a small motor and got some speed control and rigged it up with a piece of junk. Just by squeezing that wheel up tight against the motor there, I get nice slow movement. Here I got a motor from Radio Shack and a couple other parts. That didn't seem to work out too well. So I built this thing. This thing is a proper speed control. Pulse width modulation. So what is pulse width modulation? Well, it's a way to control the speed of the motor and it uses it by switching really fast. Normally you have something that's on or off, but pulse width modulation is able to turn that motor on and off very quickly. And it could do it in different amounts of time being on or off. You have different duty cycles. The more time it spends on, the faster it goes. And the more time it spends off, the slower it goes. It's a really deep subject, so I'm just going to end there. So I started off by building a box for the controller. That was just some wood pieces that were glued together. You'll see a clamp on 45 degree there. That's just to help keep it square. The whole box was just built with just wood glue and clamping it together. Once that dried, it's plenty strong. No screws, no nails or anything, just wood glue. And just any time that you're gluing anything up like this, you know, it's a good idea to use clamps. It's another great reason to just have clamps around. Lots of uses for these things. Most of all, you can use them to actually clamp wood together like they were designed for. Imagine that. Here's the motor controller, the speed controller here. And that's on some posts. See, I added some stain to the box. Put the controller in there and left some room for all my wires and whatnot. And I pressed the post down into the wood since it's a, I think it's poplar. So it's soft enough. It made some indentations. I don't know if you can see it. And then I picked out a drill bit that was just a little bit smaller than the screw posts and drilled those out. And that just gives us some space to take up some, some of the glue, some of the epoxy. And speaking of epoxy, mix some of that up. And once that was mixed up, I put a little bit into the holes that I drilled out. I didn't drill it the whole way through and some on the posts. And once I put that into the box, I went and give it a firm press into the box just to make sure it was seated right where I wanted it to. And after that was all set up, I went and figured out where I wanted my speed control knob and my switches to go. And after that, I mounted some rails. These rails are going to hold magnets. There's going to be one set of magnets inside the box and one set on the lid. And use some of these great little clips that I got. These, these clamps, they cost like 30 cents or 36 cents a piece or something like that at Home Depot. I found them great to have around. I have about 10 of them. And then you can see there's the switches on the outside of the box and the speed control knob. And on the inside there, it's really meant to be mounted on, uh, the control knobs meant to be mounted on something like metal or a plastic enclosure. The wood was a bit thicker. I had to carve that out a bit just to get that to fit in there. And that was just kind of a hack job. For the rails to glue down the magnets, uh, I used, I can't remember what the name of them is called, but not the neodymium magnets. The neodymium magnets are a little bit harder to work with just because they're, they have a flat, shiny surface. I do use them sometimes, but you got to sand them and prep your surface to get them to stick. These things you just goop on a bunch of epoxy and they stick pretty good. And if you look to the right there, you'll see one of the problems with working with magnets. They 
like to stick to each other. And then there's the other set of magnets just on top of the box. Um, got to remember to check the direction of the magnets that are going on the right way. So they're not going to repel each other. So they stick to each other. And with the magnets, I like that because I could just throw the lid on. Like I could almost throw it at the box and it'll go on. Then for the bottom where I'm going to screw it on, I'm going to put a quarter 20 T-nut in there. So I started by drilling that out. And once that was all drilled out, I took my actual T-nut and pressed that into the box to make some indentations. Those indentations, I used those to drill pilot holes. And what the pilot holes do is keep the wood from splitting. You could just hammer it in there if you have a thicker piece of wood. But in this case, I'm afraid of that wood breaking, especially since I already have components mounted in there. So I pre-drilled all those out. And that'll allow the T-nut to go in a lot more smoothly. And it's more place for the epoxy to get into. So you see what it looks like finished with the epoxy on there. And then I could screw on a magic arm. And that's what I've been using to mount that onto the piece of junk. And then after that, there's the finished box. So here, I didn't get super in-depth with this particular project because this is kind of just messing around and I just show you guys what I'm up to uh, going forward I am going to get a little bit deeper in the rabbit hole with the electronics I've already built some track and I've already been able to use the piece of junk as a proper slider that's revision one and for now that works like that on a flat surface it doesn't do well on slopes it's just has a lot of shortcomings so it's just something I've came up with just messing around just playing around with so i hope that was interesting for you guys if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time bye